Hi, welcome to Write More Light. My name's Sarah. I'm with the Midwest Writing Center, and this is a web series. Uh, on <laughs> if you're not familiar, if you haven't watched us before, here's what's going to happen. Um, alternately, I will give a little lesson in something in writing, or I'll interview someone who knows things. Today, we're going to be interviewing someone who knows things on the topic of world building. After uh, after that, we'll give updates from the Midwest Writing Center, and then uh, our guest will have a writing prompt. Our guest today is Ava Miller. Ava has been writing since they could pick up a pencil, and to everyone's chagrin, they showed no signs of stopping. They've been featured in the Atlas, the Quarry at St. Olaf, and even in ghostwriting for YouTubers. In 2023, they graduated from St. Olaf College with double majors in English and Film and Media Studies. They hope to continue studying creative writing at the graduate level. One day, they will get around to publishing no novels about aliens and heavy metal music. Ava currently lives in Davenport, Iowa with several weird cats. Thanks for hanging out with me, Ava. Of course. Can confirm several weird cats. Most of them are yours. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so today we're talking about world building because um, I'm familiar with some of Ava's work. Um, and every time I hear about it, I'm like, How what is this universe? And it's always, uh, Ava has several different projects going on that all involve, I think, a ton of world building. Um, so Ava's going to educate us today. Yeah. First question is, what is world building? We're going to do a jargon moment. Um, so to me, world building is um, anything you have to do in order to make a universe come to life. And I know that's like exactly what it sounds like, but... Um, in like a lot of, um, especially if you have like a bigger writing project that you want to uh, kind of carry on over a long period of time, you want to put like um, a bunch of different characters and like have a bunch of different stories take place within this universe. It's the stuff that you have to think about to make the universe make sense. Um, so it's like coming up with your own set of rules for the universe, um, coming up with uh, like the types of characters that would exist in this universe, the types of like if you want to get like really specific, like laws, um, morals, things like that, but also just like basic stuff like landscapes and like languages that would happen in this universe. Um, it doesn't even have to be a fictional universe. You can just, you can world build um, within like our real world, um, just kind of like inserting your own um, characters and stories. Um, it would just involve like um, taking things from the real world. So like if you're going to write a story that takes place in the Quad Cities, um, the world building would be um, the stuff that goes on in the Quad Cities that is very local. Um, it's just thinking about stuff like that. Things that other people wouldn't know that you would have to explain. Yeah. And I want to... Uh, I looked it up. <laughs> By the way, one word. Didn't know that. Um... And the internet agrees entirely with Ava. Yay. But used a uh, much fancier language, which I don't actually love. So um, both Wiki and Merriam-Webster agree with you. After that, it's a little less. Uh, I'm. It's just not websites I'm going to look at. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, cool. Thank you. So I, you mentioned, I'm really grateful you mentioned this because it... Um, Um, it actually, you already answered my next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, um, to sort of like spell out why I asked, I would ask it. Um, we usually see world building in like, of, or think of world building in like fantasy and sci-fi. Um, so the, the people who do it most often or seem to do it most often, um, <clears throat> have to explain a totally fresh world, not the world that we're already familiar with. Um, and you said it might also happen in what I'll call conventional literature. Can you talk about those other like niche moments where world building might be necessary in like literary fiction? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to just think of like, I thought the Quad um, Cities was a great example. And yeah. Um, I'm kind of thinking of like, uh, I've been watching Lord of the Rings recently, as you know, um, and Tolkien's universe is a universe that takes so much world building and I feel like that's kind of like the stereotypical type of world building scenario that people would think of they'd think of like this giant fantasy world that has all of these different species and 
uh, its own languages. Like Tolkien was a, a linguist primarily. So his entire world was built around languages. Um, and that's, I think that's kind of a niche thing that uh, is kind of like a starting or jumping off point for world building. Um, if you literally want to just create a universe around a language, I think that's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, if you were to be talking about the Quad Cities, um, like say there's something you really like about the Quad Cities, like, I don't know, you love how people speed over the Centennial Bridge. Um, <laughs> you could you could world build from there and that could involve like, you know, like going out and doing research about like the history of the Centennial Bridge, or I guess it's the Talbot, Ta Talbot Bridge or whatever now. Um, but uh, you could do research about it and look up the history and like famous incidents that involve the bridge or you could just like make up your own stuff especially if you're like I don't know if I'm writing poetry we were talking about this the other day um a lot of the things I like to do is like start off from a real uh situation that happened and then just like put in my own elements so like maybe your uh, poem about the centennial bridge is all about like uh I don't know how aliens invaded so you'd be coming up with like like, what were the aliens? What was their goal with the Centennial Bridge? Did they like speeding across the Centennial Bridge? So, like, that kind of stuff. I love that. I love that example because it is, yeah, super specific. Um, you also made me think of, I've read a couple of books that, like, seem like they're realistic fiction. And I would not say that they're not. Um, but they deal with, like, secret societies or whatever. Or like something like that, or just like a a club, or you know something in which you still have to explain those things. Yeah, like you know, if there's a secret society in the Quad Cities, um, unless the author's a Freemason, I don't know if they're going to be involved in a secret society. So yeah, it would it would be really interesting to explore how a secret society would interact with like a, a fictional secret society would interact with um, the stuff that we all kind of know and have knowledge about generally. Um, I know specifically about maybe two projects. Um, how, um, I guess I assume you have many and I would love to know how many, <laughs> um, but choose maybe one or two um that you feel like you can talk about and please tell us about it yeah um so mentioned in my bio was the the novels about aliens and heavy metal music um so that's my that's my very first universe um this is something i don't feel proud admitting but it, it came out of a star wars fan fiction um and that's also a great jumping off point uh for world building is um you know, starting with something established and figuring out how you could twist it. So mine has become completely unrecognizable from Star Wars, but it does take place in a different universe. Um, that universe uh, is, uh, as of right now, it has four different species with uh, four different planets. So it's focusing on, um, so as Leia Toon is the main planet, then Zis, and then Hatissa and Treyai. Uh, and they're all kind of like, within this universe, but, but Asleia Toon is the main focus. And on Asleia Toon, there's um, this heavy metal band um, and they're kind of, they live in this town called Debussy. It's kind of like a stand-in for like New York City. Um, and the entire, like the story mainly focuses on each member of the band um, and like their lives as, um, kind of kids trying to make it in this underground heavy metal scene on this fictional planet. Um, something that I really like about, instead of like, you know, just writing about a heavy metal band on Earth, um, trying to figure out what they're doing is that um, I can kind of control the narrative of like the history of metal in this universe. Um, so like, you know, while in 2024, metal's pretty established, it's been around since like, the 60s and has grown through like hair metal in the 80s like grunge uh uh kind of getting more heavy in the early 2000s um i don't have to strictly adhere to that history um in my own universe uh these kids uh are uh, the the metal scene is very very like small so it, nobody really knows about it right now um, and they're kind of trying to fix that to make people more aware of their genre of music. 
Um, and then I also get to include aliens. So that's really cool. Um, <laughs> uh, something that I, I like about uh, that is that, um, you know, I have characters who are aliens, but it doesn't like really impact the story that much. It's just kind of like a fun little side note. So like the, the lead singer of the band is a member of a species whose eyes change color to match their moods. Um, and that's just kind of like, you know, a fun little thing. Uh, his story is going to be a little more focused on how he is an alien and like his species is like super, super endangered. So like he's kind of like helping to um, rebuild his species while also being the lead singer of this metal band. So uh, just kind of little fun things like that. Um, so I, you, um, you reminded me of something two things uh one is something that i get all bent out of shape about and that is like i'll be dealing with something real and i'll be like well don't know any real facts or how to do research so i guess i'll give up which is like <laughs> stupid um keep working make stuff up yeah deal with it in edits don't don't be me and the other thing is um i love very much that you were like i don't have to I don't have to do that because this is elsewhere and i remembered um first i remembered a very specific thing uh from the book why we broke up by daniel handler and myra coleman in which um they the characters go to like movies and concerts and stuff and all of the all of it's made up because mm -hmm. that way you don't have pre you the reader don't have preconceived feelings about whatever it is you can't say that the character's interpretation is wrong etc and then I realized um, the series of unfortunate events is like some out of time universe. Yeah. That doesn't really follow the rules of our, of our society. Logic. Yeah. And it just like did not ever occur to me that world building was involved in those two things. So yeah. that's really cool. Um, okay. So the, the, the premise of your, your book then is um is the story of the band yeah um so this is something that uh i kind of well, stole i borrowed from uh, kurt vonnegut is that um in a lot of like vonnegut books um there's a character that pops up in another character's story and they interact but it's not like you needed to know about that character in order to get the other story. So my universe is kind of going down that route. So it's like every character is going to have their own story and their own book. Um, and so it's just kind of, it's going to be a series that you can pick up whenever and wherever. Um, it would be helpful for you to like say, so my main character that I'm working on his novel right now is Fens. Um, so if I'm writing a story about Fens, there's going to be like, so Errol's gonna pop up in the story about Fens. Um, and you don't have to read Errol's book in order to know what's going on with Fens, but if you do, it's kind of like, here's some Easter eggs about why Errol is the way he is when he's interacting with Fens. Um, so that's kind of how my universe is going to be, um, very, I want it to be like accessible and not like you have to read every single book. I love that. And I also love, um, yeah, it feels like an Easter egg when you're in yeah. the know rather than it feeling like an obligation. And I can't believe I didn't mention this. This is why I take notes. Um, <laughs> fan fiction. I want to give like big props to that as a starting point, because I feel like if it were me, and I'm not saying I'm normal in this way, because I already said, like, I'm like, I can't do the research on this thing, so I'll give up. Um, like, I was trying to write a story that was just, that was in this this universe. Um with one really goofy element, right? This was like my prompt for myself. And I had these characters, never finished the story, by the way. Uh, I had these characters building a full-size replica of the moon. Ooh, I love that. And I was like, well, science happens, so I can't do that. Like, <laughs> I just could not get out of my brain to be like, wouldn't that displace everything? Like, for yeah. Um, yeah. So if you start out with something, with a base, right, um, which we'll say, um, since I, I brought up fan fiction, we'll say is like someone else's universe, like Star Wars, like 
um, Lord of the Rings. We've got we've got a premise. We've got the way physics works here or the way that magic works here. And so we don't have to do all that planning. But then later we can we can massage it out. Yeah. And I think that that is a really cool tool. I don't I was going to say crutch and I just don't like the way that people use the word crutch as if it's not a tool that helps you get where you're going. Um, yeah. I think that that's really cool, helpful, like cheat code. If you find something you like and you can work within its, let's say, I said physics before, and that's kind of what I mean, but it's the science of this this place. Um, awesome. Do it. Massage it out later. Uh, okay. So my next question is going to be difficult for you to answer, I think, but like, bear with me. Did you just... <laughs> You're like, yes, the next one. <laughs> Uh, I wrote like three questions in one line. I had to give myself a line break. Um, how many elements did you do you feel like you've so far ended up creating or explaining? Like, um, I don't know, gravity or the the eye color changes. Obviously, like a number is probably going to be the hard part, but like stuff like that, maybe that that surprised you or um ended up being more complicated in the end than you expected yeah um I have wow so many elements um I don't know if this is going to be another question so I'm sorry if I, I spoil this question again but um <laughs> something that okay. I really like something that has really helped me out while I've been building my universe is um this like binder that uh, my former roommate gave me shout out to Mariko that has been super helpful. I call it the Holy Grail. Um, mm. And that is where I put all of my world building elements. Um, so it's got these different sections that are about like, here's a list of every single species and like every property that they can have. And it's not a complete list, but like, here's the general stuff. So like, uh, the eye color species, like, here's the details of like, how their eyes change color. Here's why they're super endangered. Here's um, like their lifespan, uh, their uh, average height and weight, uh, kind of like their distribution across the, the planets. Um, I have then also a list of the planets, what their properties are, um, the major like countries and cities that you'd need to know. Um, that kind of like, uh, again, are an Easter egg thing. It's not like essential to the story, um, but is like interesting to know. Um, and then like, also a list of like the characters what like like everything from like I don't know their hopes and dreams to like what their favorite color is so like it's a very I wish I had it with me because I could I could show it but um it's a very long extensive list um and that's actually something that I I find uh interesting in kind of like a secret way is that like um I think a lot of like when people think of world building they think of like everything that has to go into the universe and be explained um and for me, that's not what it is. It's like, yes, it's nice to have this explanation about everything that could possibly go on in this universe, but most of it is just for me, um, for me to fall back on. Um, and so like, I'm not, like, it's not essential to the story for me to explain to you every single like major city on this planet, but um, it's nice for me to know and have in the back of my mind and like go back and uh, be able to pinpoint what is where. Um, and so, yeah, most of it is probably not going to make it into the actual stories that I write, but it's just very cool to have. I've heard that a lot in, in writing classes and in writing advice that like, you should know more about your character than what is in print. Yeah. And, um, and also that like, regardless of how much outside this world, right. Um, like fantasy or sci-fi or whatever um regardless of how much your world is is different from this world um if you don't know the details it's not going to seem as fleshed out yeah um yeah so i see i see that that advice a lot and i also really love this holy grail idea and i think i will adopt it yeah <laughs> um and I don't I clearly don't have like a, a well uh, 
a, a well cared for imagination if I can't figure out my way around a replica of the moon. <laughs> um, but I feel like it can just be very, very useful all around. Like in my long form project that I'm working on, I like kind of like I don't like I feel like I know the backstory for each of the characters. But if I am not careful, I'll like start developing new ones. So just being able to have some of that set for myself will be really helpful. Just like an index my, or something. My template too. Um, for my list of characters, it's got like um, a drawing of the character up in the little corner and I do that myself. But then also like um, name, age, species, birthday, uh, and then like likes, dislikes, um, major flaws, major uh, assets to their character, like stuff like that. That's awesome. Actually, I might um I might hit you up to maybe do like a lesson here on that. Yeah. Uh cuz I think that that'll be just useful to everyone. Yeah. Um so within that um having to create explain these elements um what were some surprises that you maybe found as you were as you were working into this project and you were like, "Oh, well, got to add this now." This might actually be a good time to jump over to the the other universe that I've made uh, that you know a lot about. Um, so this is what I call the synthetic universe. It's my, my uh, I love it so yeah. much. <laughs> my I'm second like universe. Chomping at the bit about this about oh, this yes. story. Um, so I this think about part, it all the time. I think about it all the time too. It's a problem, but um, so this one. I don't want to give like too much away, but uh, it is a twist on the Wizard of Oz. Um, the universe did not spring out of like Wizard of Oz fanfic like my other one did, um, but it did like I was thinking about us. I, I was thinking about a story that like these characters could take, and I was like, oh, that like fits perfectly. Anyway, um, this one uh, I'll have to find the picture for it, but it came out of a T-shirt um, or an album cover. I saw a an album cover for the band Chelsea Grin, and I was like, that image is really cool to draw that character. And then I did, and then I was like, wow, that's creepy. Let's like, yeah, the slit mouth guy. Um, let's make a species that can't die. Um, and so like, I started coming up with that. Basically the rules of this universe are um, humans kind of live like in tandem with what are called synthetics. They are uh, like, they're basically human souls in a fake, like, plasticine body that can't die. Um, so they have been, this is, like, very far in the future, they've been tasked with doing the, like, undesirable jobs. So, like, um, this character that Sarah knows is uh, a guinea pig for a uh, makeup company. Um, so the company tests, tests, like, chemicals on them to see if they're going to be, like, fit for human consumption. Um, the other characters are like an aircraft technician. Um, there's a bomb tech, uh, like a factory worker. And so it's it's like, they do like the dangerous jobs that would normally like hurt humans. Um, and so that's been a lot of, like a lot of that has been very surprising to me because like I'll, I'll tell somebody about it and then they'll ask me a question. I'm like, I literally never considered that. Um, so like, it's, it's a body horror story. Um, so... A lot of the characters, like if you see drawings of them, especially like the Chelsea Grin guy, they're they're like bleeding. Um, there's like uh, kind of guts and gore exposed. Um, and so I asked one of my friends, like I showed it to one of my friends and he was like, why do they have human colored blood? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Cause it like, you know, on a like a pre purely aesthetic yeah. reason, it's like it's scary. It like gets a reaction out of people, but like, why do they have human colored blood? Like, wouldn't you want to like distinguish between uh, humans and synthetics? So like, you know, if, I don't know if like a, if a person gets killed, you'd want to see by their blood if like they're a human or a synthetic. Um, so I ended up saying that like, yes, they do have like a different consistency of blood. Um, their blood is there to like lubricate the body, but they don't actually need blood to live. Um, so like, it's been stuff like that. Um, I found that, sharing with people 
I mean, I'm always going to advocate for sharing your story with people, but like sharing with people has brought things to my attention that I didn't know didn't make sense in the universe. Um, and so then it's been like coming up with an explanation is even more rewarding. That's so cool. I feel like I'm not like super private about my work, but I feel like we hear we being people who talk to writers, um, we hear a lot that like people are really keeping it close to their chest just because it's a work in progress or it makes them feel vulnerable. Um, but yeah, I feel like if you're reading a a, a book like that um, and you're like, wait a minute, these aren't like people, people. That's like a really valid question. Why are they bleeding and why are they bleeding red? Yeah. But yeah. Um, and then here's the shirt, by the way. I don't know if you can see that. Ah, that's so upsetting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, when you said you said why, my brain was like, because it's body horror, and then I was like, wait, that's not an in-universe answer. Yeah, exactly. That's really it. so. Yeah, I'm I'm here to just uh, bump what you said, share 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 your work. It will make your work better. Oh my god, where'd my questions go? Even if it's not like a world building thing, like even just sharing your work is like, people notice typos that you never noticed. Um, stuff like that. I, I am very good at writing like, two, two. Um, so like, he went to to the store and like someone catches that yeah. for me. Um, even if it's not like a logistical thing. No, yeah. And it can, it's embarrassing if you skip that step. Yeah. Um, do you have a process for world building or is it like you, when things come up, you deal with them? Yeah, it is kind of like that. Um, I do have like with the Holy Grail, I have a template, um, that I like fill out when, and that gives me like a basic idea of what's happening. Um, and then, you know, having like the structure of the story has also helped me like, when I'm like, when I realized that I wanted the synthetic story to be like, follow a general path of the Wizard of Oz. Um, I just like looked at the Wizard of Oz and was like, okay, which character fits into like, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and like, I figured that out. Um, I guess other than that, my process is just kind of like, I notice things in my life that I think would be cool in this universe, like adapted into the universe. Um, that's a lot of the reason why I write quotes down is like, they're really good inspiration for like my writing, even if it's just like someone said something cool that I think would fit well in like a poem, or someone said something that just happened to be something that my character would totally do. Um, or like if I witness something going on, like in traffic or the store or something like that. Um, I'm like, oh, like this would be interesting if like, I don't know, a harsher version of that happened in my universe kind of thing. Um, I guess a lot of it is just kind of keeping an open mind and looking out for things that strike your interest for whatever reason. Um, another part of the Holy Grail is just like imagery that I like. So like I'll write down like something that like pops into my mind that I saw like in a YouTube video or something that's like, this is really cool. I think it would be cool if something like that happened in my universe. Can you, and I don't want you to like go through the whole thing right now, but what sorts of things are in that template? Um, so for like the Holy Grail, it's separated into multiple parts. Um, so there's the one about characters that I like kind of explained already. There's the one about uh, locations. Um, Mariko, Mariko set up the entire Holy Grail for me. So like she wrote out the sections for me. Um, I'm not sure where she got those, but she did something about like character art. There's a part for brainstorming. Um, there's a part for quotes and there's a part for history. Um, the history part, I've just kind of like been working on on my own. Um, kind of like jumping back to the other universe. Uh, I wrote, I'm like writing out um, like what gods there are in this universe, like what they uh, believe in. Um, and so kind of like the religious uh aspect has been the main like focus i've been working on for a couple months now um but then i also have the history of like each band in the universe so there's just like a little like i don't know if you were look like look up a band on like wikipedia it's basically like a, a wikipedia intro about the band like when they started what their major albums are um how they got together that kind of thing 
Awesome. You answered like four questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything we've kind of done this already? I might skip this one. I'll come back to it. Um, so I would probably call myself a pantser. Um, if we're talking the the analogy you'll see around um, on socials or whatever is like uh, writers are either and I don't really love any any strict dichotomies like this, but it's fine are either planners or pantsers, meaning they plan everything out or they fly by the seat of their pants um, as as a pantser, uh, I don't really think that world building is ever going to be my um, easy for me, um, yeah. but do you have maybe advice for do you have advice you might give to to other pantsers who are trying to work within a larger world? Yeah. Um, so I am absolutely a planner, 110%. Um, as probably I, I've already elaborated on quite a I bit. I feel like I feel like people who do world building are just like they just are. Yeah. Um, something that has helped me, um, and that like I, I sure definitely you know about, um, is that within world building, something that I like to do is write like smaller stories about um, individual characters. So like, you know, in the in the span of my novel series, that's it's going to be like the larger novel about Fens um, is like his story that is open to the public, I guess. But then I have, uh, especially in the synthetic universe, which I came up with like two years ago, um, which is which is really new for me. Um, uh, when I came up with that, um, I kind of really didn't like know anything about any of the characters and have like an extensive history for them. Um, and so this, for me, this felt like a pantser thing, um, <laughs> and I just, which is so not, but like I decided to write a story about one of the characters in the universe just to kind of like flesh out their backstory. That's the guinea pig character that Sarah is well aware of by now. Um, I decided to write a story about them. Um, and with that, I really didn't know where I was going. I just kind of had like rules in the universe where like I I knew I wanted like this to happen over the course of the story and I wanted like this character to be introduced. Um, and so I just kind of like wrote a little piece that was like, here's a like day in the life of this character before the events of the novel ever happen. Um, and so I find that also like helpful, probably as someone who I, I can't, I'm not a pantser, obviously, but like. I guess my best advice to pantsers would be like, maybe don't go, go big or go home right away. Um, maybe like kind of start small, see where that goes and then like compare it and contrast over the course of maybe like several small stories, what, what works best. You know, the way that you described that, uh, it felt like the universe was the prompt. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. had constraints that you were working within, uh, which is really what what a writing prompt is. And that's that's really like that's helpful for me to be like, as you know, just let's just do some scaffolding and and treat it low low stakes. Yeah, like like any other prompt. That's really cool. Awesome. I should write that down. My typing's really loud, so I'm going to try to remember it for a few minutes. Um, what's funny, you answered this already, and I just want to, um, or I feel like you did, but I just want to say it um, and then rewind into what I think your answer was. Um, my question was going to be, what advice do you have for people who are intimidated by the amount of work involved with world building? And it sounds like you were saying that like using your templates really cuts down the amount of work, chops it into little pieces. Um, but maybe you have something else you want to say about that. Yeah. I d also like what you were saying about low stakes is um, something that uh, is like very important to me. Um, so my, uh, the universe that is like the, the metal band universe um, has been around since I was in like fifth grade. Um so it's a it's a very very like old project um that I've only really like actually started on recently um but I haven't like you know like I haven't tried to like hit the ground running and get something out there and I think that's been what's been really helpful for me is, is like I just kind of have it brewing in the back of my mind at all times um 
and I don't like I don't like sit down and like force myself to be like okay what does this mean what is going on in the universe right now um I just kind of like it, it like it's nice when it comes to me and then I like get it down and uh know what it's about um but yeah I think uh it can be intimidating to think about like I have to sit down and put together a universe right now and that's kind of like uh if you like if you want to start world building I feel like that's kind of the instinct is like I need to get everything down right now and make sure that it's right before I start anything um and it's like like to me you don't really like need to find out what a right away what's right um it's nice to just kind of have like know where you want to go but then like give yourself um some like some courtesy and some some time uh not to like force anything out you know it's funny i the low stakes thing is like always my advice for everything and i just did not occur to me <laughs> for that um this is kind of a goofy question um oh. i had intended to ask it like earlier on when it would have made more sense because we've gotten kind of into the weeds um but can you think of anything like outside of writing so it can still be an art but i feel like it makes less sense oh, i'll ask the question um that can be like an an analogy for world building and if you can't i think i have ideas yeah <laughs> um but i'm thinking if i wanted to talk about world building to someone outside of outside of writing i might be like so it's kind of like this I might actually describe like art styles as kind of like world building. Um, my art style has also like evolved over the years. I like to draw pictures along with my universe um, to kind of like see what's going on. Um, I like to draw the characters. I'm very much a, a character artist. Um, but I started out in this very like kind of cartoony style that was like a lot of circles and like hair that goes like this. Um, and like you know like kids drawings um and I started out that way um and I had like constraints in that art style so like I didn't draw I didn't draw ears none of my characters had ears um <laughs> rarely any characters had eyebrows um so it was stuff like that like when you see like even like a, a painter like you know that painter by like oh this painter does this thing and that's how you can tell who that is um, that might kind of be like world building too. Like there's things that you do include and there's things that you don't include. Um, then my art style went to like, like an anime style. So there were a lot of like sharp angles, um, big eyes. Uh, that was again, a constraint of my art style is that I didn't like, I didn't draw small eyes. I had to, they had to be drawn in this certain way. And now my art style is more realistic. And again, has like, I guess the constraint would be like, I don't draw like that anymore. And that's my constraint um but yeah uh I guess like a good for, or ad wow a good adjective for world building would be consistency and so anytime you see consistency anywhere else it's like you know how this thing has developed and what exists within this constraint sorry I keep making faces um I'm trying to stretch and failing uh <laughs> um that's great. You, um, I did not expect that at all. Um, not that I like had predict something I like doing is like really not knowing about what I'm asking about so that like yeah. everyone can gain background info. Um, and so really, um, really reminding me about restraints is constraints is, is really, really helpful. Um, I was thinking sort of like, um, not saying using a cookbook, but reading a cookbook. Um, there's always like, I don't know, 10 pages in the beginning that are like, here are the staples you need. Here's what this word means. Here's the tools you'll need. And so it sets you up for, for cooking. But the thing is like, who reads cookbooks? Yeah. It's me. I do. I mean, um, thing with knitting patterns, if you knit, yeah. I don't read patterns, so it's a problem for me, but patterns will explain the gauge and the type of yarn that's best suited for this thing. But we pants are cooking anyway. I'm a pants knitter. <laughs> I'm not a pants writer. It's so weird. <laughs> uh... Is there anything you think is important to add that I've left out because I don't know enough? 
Hmm. Let me think. I think what's been fun for me is that I do have like two universes going on at the same time. Um, and I don't like that might be unhelpful for other people. Um, but it's always just like nice to have something to think about. I guess my brain just works in like a world building way anyway. Um, and so I'm constantly thinking of things that would like flesh out a story. I think that's kind of the nature of maybe being a planner too. Um, but yeah, I, I encourage all pantsers out there to keep an open mind about um, what could and couldn't fit in a universe. I feel like just like even having like a yes or no prompt right away is is uh, interesting for a universe. Like, do I want my universe to be fantasy or sci-fi? That's not a yes or no question, but yeah. uh, do I want it to be both? Like that kind of a thing. So like, would this fit? No, would this fit? Yes. That's, I'm like, I feel like I'm learning so much. <laughs> um, so thank you. Um, with that, I'm going to move into updates from the Midwest Writing Center. I want to obviously thank you. You have taught me, you've taught me a lot. Um, probably going to be picking your brain yeah. for the next couple of days about it. And I'll be a little annoying. Uh, <laughs> I would like, love to, <laughs> I would love to, I know I've already said this, but I would love to have you maybe do a little teaching on, um, on maybe your Holy Grail or your, um, template or just world building. I think that could be really, really cool and definitely very helpful for everyone else. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do real brief updates from the Midwest Writing Center because I didn't bring my planner over to this spot and I find it very difficult to walk today. A <laughs> um, couple things are going on tomorrow. First, um, the in-person writer's studio group will be meeting at Theo's tomorrow, October 19th, Saturday. We'll be meeting at Theo's at 1030 a.m., instead of at the Midwest Writing Center at 11, because Ryan and I will be at Iowa City Book Fest all day. And we hope that you will um, participate in one of those things. But if you don't, and you are still in the Quad Cities, uh, from 10 to 2 tomorrow is the uh, Freedom to Read Day of Action. And the Rock Island Public Library is um, has like action stations throughout the library. It's going to be very, very cool. Um, I will also be at Iowa City Book Fest on Sunday, October 20th on a panel on publishing with some really cool people. Um, I want to say Mackie Garrett from 508 Press, um, Jennifer McBain Stevens, who has published um, traditionally, non-traditionally. She's published a lot. Um, Steve Semkin from Ice Cube Press will be on the panel. Uh, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. We're going to talk about publishing and publishing specific to folks who are... Um, maybe not as involved in the um, literati scene. Uh, then let's see what else we have going on next Thursday, October 24th is our next uh, Spectra reading. It will open at 6 PM with a free writing class with Gina Franco on writing between communities, which is first, she's an incredible teacher. Uh, she's a professor of creative writing at Knox college in Galesburg, which is, great school to study creative writing um and she's an incredible incredible poet her book the accidental is one of my one of my favorites um we were really lucky to have her for um the collins writers conference a couple of years ago um, but that was remote and this will be in person so she is of course also our featured reader for the spectra reading series that day again that's thursday october 24th and opening for her will be uh, Zafira Hassan and Melissa Conway. So really, really kick-ass lineup and also free class. There will also also be an open mic, forgot about that part, at seven. And that'll be first come, first serve, limited time slots. Um, it'll be really, really incredible. And that's really what I want to highlight for now. But of course, um, Writer Studio is the first and third Saturday of every month, unless something weird happens. Uh, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Time, there's an online group and an in-person group. We've got youth writing workshops going on the second and third Tuesday of every month. Second Tuesday of the month is online, so you don't have to um, go anywhere, and you'll hang out with me on Zoom. 
Uh, that's for writers 15 to 19 years old. We'll open with a writing activity to get our sort of writing brains on, and then we'll move into workshopping. The in-person one is the third Saturday of the month, and that is at the Writing Center. That's all the updates I'm going to give because I feel like if I move any farther into the future, I will get dates wrong. So we're going to move into today's writing prompt. Ava, take it away. Um, so this is a prompt that Sarah gave at one of the, uh, it's like, I don't know, a, a, a trial um, run of the, the youth workshop, um, which I attended at age 24. Um, but uh, Listen, we love young writers, um, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, so this is a prompt I really liked, and I think it helps a lot with world building. Um, I wrote a poem that Sarah seems to really like based off of it. Um See, and I do. Yeah. Um, so the prompt was to write about a historical event like you were there, but without doing any research. Um, and that leaves, it leaves a lot of room open for you to just like do whatever you want. Um, what I wrote about was, uh, what I started off with, I should say, was uh, the JFK assassination. Um, but then I started like, adding details that definitely did not happen during the JFK assassination. Um, and it was a really interesting exercise. And I think that like, you know, going full circle to what I said at the beginning, um, even starting off with the thing that actually happened can uh, count as world building, so. I yeah. want to uh, give credit to, that's sort of a, an edited version of a prompt from the 3 a.m. Epiphany by Brian Kitely. I had to look up the author. Um, so I'm going to say, however your writing comes out, give yourself five, 10 minutes on a timer, um, journal or poetry or prose or whatever it is that comes out is good. And that was, um, I'm going to try to re-say it, but I think you said it better than I will be able to. You're going to write about a historical event as if you were there, but without doing any research. Yep. Cool. Um, thank you so much, Ava. And uh, to everyone hanging out with us today, write more light into your life.